Yo guys, always good. Welcome back on the Uncle Sharma channel. Today, uh, episode looking at Inter's pre-season up until now without overreaction about anything and then uh, finishing off the video with some of the latest news. So if you don't want to talk about or listen to me talking about the pre-season, you can skip ahead on the timestamp to the latest news. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. Yes, guys, as I said, today's episode looking into Inter's preseason up until now, primarily looking at Lons versus Inter, our last uh, match uh, just yesterday played away in France. Uh, it didn't really feel like a preseason friendly because the way the stadium was packed and loud, like that felt like it was a cup of semi final or a final, like the crowd was going, and even the match. Uh, it was quite competitive for a, for a preseason friendly. Like the tackles were going in, and you could tell the 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 tempers were flaring up. And I tweeted at one point that I can just see there's going to be a fight breaking out at some point, and it actually did happen because uh, Dumfries started beefing uh, their goalkeeper at one point when he got elbowed in the face. Yeah, all in all, this is what preseason friendlies are for, guys. I see a lot of people overreacting, uh, especially after yesterday. You know, losing like it doesn't honestly, it does not matter. The result of a preseason friendly whether you win whether you lose whether you draw it really isn't the 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 purpose of a preseason friendly like have you seen um liverpool lost 4-0 uh, the preseason friendly against man united like chelsea lost yesterday to arsenal 4-0 like imagine if inter lost 4-0 to like milan or events like it. it's just obviously it looks bad but the purpose of pre-season guys is to get juice and energy and the fuel needed for the rest of the season into the players legs that is the sole purpose and of course working on some tactics if you've got new players try to integrate those into the tactics and the system and the chemistry of the team um and a lot of the teams that inter are playing are teams that are ahead of inter in the pre-season uh, schedule so like lugano where pretty much the swiss league was ready to go but pretty much by the time Inter played them. So they were much ahead physically, uh, athletically. Same goes for Monaco and Lons, the team that we played yesterday because Ligue 1 starts earlier than, uh, than Serie A. So they've been training. Uh, they're ahead by a week in terms of their training uh, schedule. That will be the same for Lyon when we play them next week. Um, so and this always happens as the teams that, you know, when you start your preseason a little bit later, your legs are heavier the the you know the heavy running and heavy like athletic work they do the legs are, legs are very heavy to korea said that in his post-match interview yesterday so honestly i just i know most people don't but there's still some people that are looking into the results of these just ignore that what we're going to talk about is just the things that i can see from this pre-season uh period uh some of the points that you can clearly see that inter need to address in the transfer market as well and that the one number one is the defense like clearly Inzaghi's kind of screaming out he said even bef just before Bremer was stolen off us when he was when he was asked about him he said like you know we need a defender there we need a defender there whether it's Bremer or not and Bremer hasn't arrived still we need a defender there we saw that like yesterday the other friendly is like Wonder. you know the, there's no one behind the vibe because Ranocchi has gone so there's no one as the vice the right now i mean we're trying to improve on the right but there still isn't the vice the right so it, whether it is someone to take the spot of the right or improve on the right or even back up the right or hopefully not screen uh, we need like numerically we need a center back because we've seen d'ambrosio's even had to play in the center of the three darmian's having to play in that position di marco fontana rosa the youth player played there uh, so we haven't actually even got to see uh, Darmian as the left wing back yet because he has had to play at the back. And that is the reason why Lazaro is getting so many minutes. I mean, it's funny, uh, F F FCIM comps, the uh, the guys that make the compilations on Twitter, they even made a compilation for Lazaro. Like, that's, uh, it looks like his Lazaro comeback season, like he's been getting a lot of minutes. It looks like he's got Enzalgi's trust at the moment. But it is because of these issues at the centre-back position because Darmian's having to play there. D'Ambrosio, we know even he can play wing-back, but he's having to play at centre-back. Um, Gossens was injured in the last match. So numerically, just we just needed someone there. Uh, so Lazaro is getting those minutes. And if you are on the Lazaro hype train or if you are a Lazaro fan, 
Fabrizio Biazin, who is a reported uh, or a um, you know reliable journalist in the interlore, has said that Lazaro is not part of the Inter plans, which again is. I've always felt Lazaro's time at Inter is a little bit harsh. He's never actually got a proper chance at Inter. And he's looked, he looked looked okay in this preseason friendlies. That you ever look at this uh, little cross he did for uh, Lukaku that just uh, the keeper just got to it, so he couldn't get to Lukaku. But he, you know he's, he's he's shown some promise in these matches. Of course, he's not left-footed or he's not both-footed like even Perisic was. He's very much right-footed and he cuts in on his right a lot from that left-hand side. But you know, it wouldn't be the end of the world to me if we end up keeping Lazaro if no one comes in because at the moment it looks like there are no offers for him. Once again, I'm sure Inter would like to get someone to buy him outright. No more loans, no more loan with options to buy because those clearly just don't work out. Some of the other concerns I have uh, coming from this match, again, it's not. I'm not judging from this specific match, but I'm just using this clip from yesterday. Stefan de Vrij, he just looks he just looks like he's physically declining i mean last season that's what it looked like even though he's only 30 years of age he shouldn't be right now but the guy just looks clunky and slow at the moment and, and of course yesterday you will everyone looked slow yesterday there was no player honestly there was no yesterday no player looked good to me uh, even you know the brozovic's hakan varela probably actually is the one that looks the most because he just looks the fittest right now but De Vrij, like, you know, he tried to go for this high press completely, you know, when you go for such a high press, you have to either get the ball or you foul the guy. And De Vrij didn't do either of those. Defense was exposed. Dumfries should have done better there uh, in terms of he should have stayed with his man and Bastoni moans at him for that. But then Dumfries himself shouts at De Vrij for that. And you can see how slowly De Vrij jogged back as well. It just... If we want to play a higher line, this is what they wanted Bremer, basically. If we want to play a higher line, more modern football, which is what I think Inzaghi does want to do, we can't have Stefan de Vrij as the, uh, in your, in your defence because you just can't defend in open spaces like that. None of the three, I've always I've talked about this already, Bastoni, de Vrij, Skrinja, all three of them actually are not particularly great in open space. Skrinja is the best. De Vrij is definitely not uh, comfortable in those open spaces. So that's why they're looking at a more athletic profile. But again, I don't want to, you know, throw shade on De Vrij. I hope he can turn his uh, last season around, which I think was, you know, again, exaggerated a little bit. He didn't make a couple of mistakes here and there, but, you know, it's, it's, it, he wasn't awful. Like, he's still a quality defender and it looks like he probably will be the starting defender once again next season, depending on what happened in the transfer window. But some worrying signs again physically from him and same from Dzeko. Like, remember the pre-season friendly last year we played uh, when Jekyll actually wasn't even registered. He came on, I think it was Dinamo Kiev, and, you know, he impressed straight away and looked like, you know, physically really fit. Like, there was one, that I think with the goal that we scored that he ran past the goalkeeper. Like, he looked like, you know, athletically he was at a good point even at his age. But we saw the last four or five months of Inter last season and in this pre-season, this, uh, this time round, like, he just looks off the pace um technically just making a lot of mistakes as well and just like the shot here like Korea and Hakan link up well and he just has no spunk like no energy left in his legs by the end of it so again I hope him being a backup will be okay having you know not having to play full 90 minutes like he was last season juice squeezed out of him by Nzagi but just some worrying signs that you know these two don't look great physically but they are some of the bigger players in terms of body mass in the inter squad so these guys always take a little bit longer to get to the fitness levels in pre-season in Dagi decided to start actually uh Jekyll and Correa and this match has always been uh, Lukaku and Lautaro since uh, up until now but um yeah those two didn't give any good signs as we said as I already talked about Jekyll uh Correa as well kind of still making the same he's 28 years old and he's still making things like you know like this where he's taking the ball nice pressing nice little run but then like no decision making just running into the defense like come on bro you're 28 like this this is the type of decision making i expect from a 19 20 year old but also he is the one that pretty much all the good attacks came out of korea when he started linking up with players as we did before with hakan and this one with barella um his movement between the lines is still nice to see and still i still think into the do play a lot more smoother when korea plays but he just needs to takes things to the next level but the thing that you know gives me a lot of hope is Lukaku not in just this friendly but in this in this match in particular you saw 
the one thing that we couldn't do last season, which is this moment here. Barella able to hit it long to Lukaku on the counter attack, one v one, takes it past and then past the Lautaro like that. The, that that just couldn't happen last season. And then one other thing was uh, I saw a lot of people tweeting this out. Uh, Handanovic, the Onana competition looks like he's bringing some stuff out. Handanovic, like we saw some uh, some things that we haven't seen out of him. Like we saw him come out almost at the edge of his box to to make a save. Uh, he was a lot more reactive to come out as well, like a lot more than we've seen him in the past. Like he was making dives even when the ball was going wide. So I don't know, it, it looks like clearly the, the Onana competition is doing him uh, some good. But yeah, overall, as I said, I'm not drawing many conclusions from this, honestly. Like people are already speaking negatively about Bellanova. Yes, he hasn't looked that good yet, but again, you know, still getting used to the team, getting some juice into his legs. Onana, I'm not sure why he didn't get any playing time yesterday, but I hope he starts against Leon or gets like most of the, you know, at least 60, 70 minutes against Leon. We want to see him play. Go since hopefully his muscular fatigue. It shouldn't be anything serious. So he should be back for the Leon match and we need to see some signs of life from Robin Gosens because again I can already see people are starting to pipe up about him as I said next up we've got Leon and then we've got Villarreal and then the season will kick off I think they'll still do like the uh, um, in-house uh, trainings or like matches unofficial matches like we did with Novara the other day where we beat them 8-1 so just like lower level uh, teams Inzaghi needs to get his pieces so Marotta and Ozili really need to sort out the defence and sort out the outgoings we need to get Pinamonti, Sanchez these guys they need to go out and that leads me to the news the news section and of course first of all I needed to cover what Di Martio said about Skriniar who is saying that Inter's goal is now to keep and extend Skriniar's contract and they are still in talks for Milenkovic but they must sell first that is the headline as he said to Sky Sport Italia um, we know about the PSG ongoing uh, negotiations um, and I've I've already told you guys like as far as I know like the, the his contract renewal is a piece of cake like the talks with representative Sistici began well before the summer and they will soon take flight like there's no issue on that uh, you know five to six million euros net the contract should be done it just needs to be confirmed that he stays by the way people are thinking that Scrini has been kept out because of the PSG negotiations no it's not because of that it's because of his injury which he got injured with Slovakia just before the end of the season. So he's still recovering from that. So that's the reason why he's not been playing. It's not anything to do with the Mercato. They're saying the talks for Ramadani, uh, Milenkovic's agents have also been going on for a while. But apparently Fiorentina are asking for 20 million at the moment. Marotta Ozilio still do not have the go ahead from the owners, as we know, to make the investment for the next signing because we are broke. Um, Inzaghi wants a right footed defender. And for this reason, the left footed Zagadou was not made a target in attack. On the other hand, Sanchez has a particular expectation and isn't terribly interested in joining any of the teams to show interest so far uh, as they are evidently not at the forefront of the Chileans thinking that like we've said that like this guy wants some top top teams but yeah it looks like Inter want a right for a defender why, why they're focusing on Milenkovic which is interesting because I thought Milenkovic had a 15 million euro release clause but clearly maybe that had some sort of expiry date because now they want a little bit more than that something needs to happen on the on the outgoings as we know whether it is uh well, Sanchez needs to happen regardless. I don't know if Sanchez really opens up the space because they need an actual sale to happen rather than just someone going out because that the Sanchez is the only opens up space in terms of budget in the wages. Uh, so the focus right now is, you know, the one that we think will actually bring us some money, Pinamonti. So the Pinamonti Scamacca, uh, well, we can say that Scamacca is going for double the price of Pinamonti as far as we know because Scamacca is about to be bought by uh, West Ham now for around 42 million euros. I think it was like 36 million plus six in bonuses, plus 10% um, resale clause for um, Sassuolo. Sassuolo pretty much got what they wanted. They were talking about 40 plus million and they got 40 plus million for Scamacca. And the Pinamonti fanboys who said, if he's worth the same, should be going for the same. Uh, looks like they have to be settling for at least half of that, maximum half of that, because it looks like he's not going for any more than 20 million euros. But now Sassuolo by selling Skamaka means that they might be interested in a like-for-like -like replacement for Skamaka with Pinamonti, which yeah, that's a, that's not a bad, not a bad move. They're reserved for a 20 million price tag, whilst they would want a 30 million buyback clause, which I still don't understand why. Um, so yeah, hopefully that 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 would be an interesting move as well. I think actually out of all the potential moves, Monza, 
um, Atalanta and uh, now Sassuolo. I think this is the one where he potentially could be getting the most playing time and probably suits him the most because it's an attacking team, possession-based team. He should be getting a lot of goal-scoring chances. Berardi, uh, Raspadori, Traore behind him. Good, good team. Whereas, you know, with Monza, yes, they're getting a lot of players, but they will be fighting for relegation. And Atalanta with Muriel and Zapata there, I don't know actually how much straight starting time he would get. Uh, especially Gasprini loves to rotate a lot anyway. Yeah, obviously we need to charge Sassuolo a little bit more for the fact that these guys want to always charge this top dollar for their players. But yeah, hope, hope uh, that goes through. Hope the Sanchez deal is sorted out. We've been talking about that for ages, but surely at some point something will move. Sanchez was left out of the um, preseason friendly, so there couldn't be any more of a clear message from Inter to Alexis. Uh, with full respect to Alexis, of course, of his uh, ability, but we just we just can't afford him bro but yeah hope you guys enjoy that let me know your thoughts in the comments below about the preseason friendlies um is there anything concerning you particularly or anything that you are liking about what you saw in inter preseason what do you make of lazaro would you keep lazaro uh, is it lazaro comeback season what do you make of the sanchez pinamonti stuff let me know in the comments down below as always ciao ragazzi forza inter <laughs>